All right, back here live at West Washington High School here on the Ron Smith Court as we're about ready for our championship game here tonight between the Borden Braves and the Eastern Musketeers as Borden comes back to the floor. Real quickly before we get into our pregame on this uh, championship game, I want to run down that consolation game, the final stats from that. West Washington coming away with the win over Salem, 52-35 to as the Senators get it done here tonight. They were led in scoring uh, West Washington by Lane Hofler. He had four two-point field goals, three three-pointers, two of two from the line, 19 points for Lane here tonight to follow up a 10-point uh, performance last night against Eastern. And Lane led uh, all scorers in the game tonight. Uh, also for West Washington, uh, one other player in double figures, that was Mason Cox. He had five two-point field goals uh, for 10 points. Jackson Cameron had two three-pointers um, in the game and a two-point field goal. So he finished the game with eight points. Um, Titan Williams, three uh, field goals for six points. Ian Rosenbaum, three field goals for six points. And Kenton Chase rounding out the scoring for West Washington. He was three of four from the line for three points to give West Washington their 52 in that contest. And then for Salem, they were led in scoring one player in double figures for them. That was Justin Stevenson. He had two uh, two-point field goals, one three-pointer, four or five from the line, 11 points for Justin. Jason uh, or Jaden Cheatwood had two three-pointers for six. Uh, Hayden Bowman had one field goal, one three-pointer, and uh, finished with five. Caleb Tucker won a two-point field goal, two of two from the line for four. And then they had three players with three points. Hayden Collins with a three-pointer for three. Jackson Brooke with a two-point field goal, one free throw for three. And uh, Nick Ingram uh, had a three-pointer for three points to give Salem their 35 uh, in that contest. And the uh, Senators coming away with a big win over the Salem Lions. The Senators shot 51% from the field, 33% from three-point land, and 71% from the free throw stripe as they were five of seven. Salem only shot 30% from the field, 28% from three-point, six for 21, as they went for a lot of three-point shots in this game. And then uh, free throws, they were seven of 15 for 46%. So. Um, you know, the Senators get it done again. They even their record for the season right now at three and three. So uh, we go into the championship game here tonight, Craig, and uh, this should be a good one. You know, we saw Borden play extremely well last night, got that victory uh, over Salem, 67-35, uh, and they come out here tonight. The uh, Musketeers advanced over West Washington, 47-40. So uh, should be a good championship game here tonight. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a matchup of two different styles with Absolutely. with Jacob Cherry on the floor. Eastern plays a little slower with Nash on the other side. He's going to come up and, and bombs away as soon as he gets over half court. Sometimes not even over half court. It's it's within range. You know, he was in range when he got here and got off the bus. So yeah. you know he's he's going to let him fly and and I'm sure that. You know, Eastern has has a game plan on how to stop him, and I'm sure that Doc Nash has something drawn up on how to how to stop Cherry in the post. The question is, who do they go to once one of those gets stopped? Well, if if we, someone stops yeah. Nash, who do they go to? If as, someone stops Cherry, who do, who does Pekin go to? Great point. And you know, I'll say this: both these coaches are really good. And what a lot of people don't know is Ray Weatherford, who's the head coach at Eastern, was an assistant coach with Doc Nash for 15 years yeah so yeah. he's got a lot of experience uh you know he moved to eastern because his grandson kate jones who graduated last year was on that team and that's the only reason why he moved to eastern uh when they had an opening come up and then he was an assistant there and then when their head coach left last year um then ray took over the job and he's done a great job with the musketeers uh this season and also last but doc nash uh, just a great coach at Borden, probably one of the best in the area. And I'm sure he'll have a great game plan. He wants to avenge that loss from the uh, season opener that they had to Eastern. So this is their opportunity tonight here playing for 
all the marbles here on yeah. the uh, on this uh, championship night. So you know, if it, if if someone is gonna, if you're gonna pick somebody to come up with a game plan to beat somebody, and you've got 24 hours to do it. I like Doc Nash. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to pick Doc. You know, if you yeah, if you're going to battle, you want Doc Nash in your corner. That's for sure. Yeah. So we're going to have our starters here tonight. Uh, for the Borden Braves, they'll be the visitors on the scoreboard. A six-foot junior, number three, Derek Fuller Tucker, will get the start. Thought he played awfully well last night as well. Yeah, number, I, I agree with yeah, that. Number 11, Alex Schuler, the junior at 6'1". Number 21, Taysom Nash, 43 points in that game last night. He's a six-foot junior. Number 24, A.J. Agnew, the senior at six-foot. We'll start at one forward. And number 31, Judd Missy, a sophomore at 6'1". Doc Nash, as we mentioned, the head coach for the Borden Braves. And that'll be your starters for Borden. Now for Eastern, we'll announce their starters. Coach Ray Weatherford. Number 10, Cade Anderson. He's a junior at 5'10 for the Musketeers. A six foot senior. Number uh, 33, Yancey Edlin, will start at one guard. Number 25, Caden Temple, a 6'2 junior. Temple, their uh, defensive standout, also controls the ball for him at the point. At one um, forward, number Cody Bannett, number 23, a sophomore at six foot. And at center, the 6'11 uh, senior, number 30, Jacob Cherry, getting the start for Coach Weatherford. So they get Edlin back tonight. He's a normal starter for him. Yancey is a big, strong kid. He uh, He's kind of one of those kids that gets after it. Yeah. Uh, a great wrestler uh, as well. So um, Yancey back for them. He's been coming off a little bit of an ankle injury, I understand. Didn't play in the game last night against West Washington. So we'll have the tip here as they uh, tip it up here. Missy goes against Cherry. Cherry controls the tip. He'll tip it in the backcourt to Anderson. They'll get it off to Temple and the Musketeers get it underway. They'll bring it across the timeline, get it out to Cherry, out here high on the wing. He'll wheel around, goes inside to Edlin. Yancey will spin, goes deep in there, goes up strong, can't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Borden as number 11 Schuler pulls it down and out of there. Schuler on the attack, goes down low as they get it in there to Agnew, now back out. It'll come there to Schuler, now out high to 31. Judd Missy, Missy wheels around, looks, drives inside, fakes, hits it out. Number 11 with a deep three off the mark, no good, as that shot was up by Schuler and Anderson with the rebound. He'll get it up to Temple. Temple far side now, no score in this one as we're just underway here in this championship game. Edlin with it, gets it off to Cherry, top of the circle. He'll hit it over here to Bannett. Bannett now back out high to Anderson. Anderson. Looking, now gets it off to Edlin. Now he'll look inside to Cherry. Wheels it down in there to Cherry. He looks back out to Edlin. Nancy will pull it down now. Pretty good defense here by Borden. Edlin wheels back out high. He'll kick it off to Cherry. Cherry looks at the three. Now looks baseline to Temple. Caden will wheel around, goes in the lane, kicks it out. Edlin's three in the air, and he got it to go. So Edlin knocks down the first bucket of the night. And the Musketeers lead three to nothing. Back the other way for the Braves. Missy with it. Off there to Nash. Kaysom with it. Top of the circle. Steps back. Kicks it over there to Tucker. Full of Tucker. Now back over here to Agnew. Agnew will shoot the three. No good. Rebound pulled down by Anderson. Smallest guy on the floor with yeah. the rebound. Gets up and gets that one. Edlin gets it off to Temple. Now goes low to Cherry. Cherry down there in the paint, guarded by Agnew. Out to Anderson for a three, no good. Rebound pulled down by Nash. Kaysom brings it out of there, he'll drive. Gets cut off there by Temple. Now dishes it out to uh, Schuler. Schuler back out high, it comes there to Agnew. He'll drive in the paint, lost the handle on it, and a steal by Temple. Temple on the floor, and we're gonna get a tied up yep, jump, jump ball. ball. It'll go back to Borden. 
Fast and furious, a lot faster pace in that <laughs> yeah. first game. Nash to inbound for the Braves. As he'll get it into Missy. Missy will bring it across the timeline. Far side it goes to Schuler. Schuler back out to Agnew. Off to Fuller Tucker. Tucker will drive, goes in the lane, and he gets fouled on the floor. I like the way he I like plays. him too. He he's you know 100 all the time. You're going to get some mistakes out of him, but yep. Anderson yeah. with the first foul of the night as he gets called uh, for his first here and the first for the Musketeers. Uh, Braves to inbound. They'll get it in. It'll come in to Schuler. He'll get it out. Nash deep three and he buries it. Boy, that's about like what he shot last <laughs> night. He ties the game at three. Caden Temple with it. He'll bring it up for the Musketeers across the timeline off to Anderson. Anderson with it out high, goes low to Cherry on the post. Cherry looking, gets double teamed, now throws a pass almost out of bounds, but saved by Bannett. They get it into Cherry again, he'll spin, goes up, got it to go. There's nothing that Borden can do about that. Yep, hard to stop right there. When he gets it on the block, it's, it's gonna be tough to stop. Nash will wheel around, pulls up, another three, got that one. Six to five here in the first quarter, 4.42 to go. Edlin brings it up for the Musketeers. Looks far side, nothing there. Gets it off to Anderson on the far wing. He'll wheel around, looking inside, goes baseline to Bannett. Bannett spins, kicks it out to Cherry. Now off to Edlin. Yancey with it, looking, nothing there. Now gets it down low to Cherry. He'll spin, one-hander in the lane, got it to go. Cherry scores his fourth point of the night. Eight or a seven to six here. Shot up by Borden, good. Who hit that? Uh, uh, three. Oh, that was uh, Tucker. Tucker. Yeah, he got it to go. So eight to seven now, Borden back with a one point lead. Yeah, I missed the shot, I looked away for a second. Yeah. Back the other way, Temple with it, goes baseline, Cherry. Cherry looking, he'll spin, pulls up, another four footer, got it to go, he's hot. He's got six already. Borden's going to have to come up with something to do with him in the lane. You can't just let him turn and put it in. Yep. 9 2 8 here. Nash with it. He'll get it off to Agnew. He'll spin in the lane against Cherry. Throws it up. Can't get it. Cherry with the board. He'll pull it down for the Musketeers. Back the other way, Anderson. He'll stop. Flip it over to Cherry. Top of the circle. He gets it off the bandit here. Inside to Edlin. He spins. Goes up strong. Can't get it. Goes to the deck. Cherry with the rebound, but they're going to wave it off foul on the floor. This is going to be interesting to yeah. see this call. Yeah, everybody was on the floor. They're going to call it on Borden. Number 24, A.J. Agnew picks up his first personal. As Eastern number 12, Gibson will check into the game for the Musketeers. Edlund inbound for Eastern. He'll throw it in from the baseline. Gets it into Bannett. Bannett will pull it down, goes baseline, drives, throws it up, got it to go. So Bannett with his first bucket. 11 to nine here, two point, or 11 to eight, I'm sorry. Braves back the other way. They get it off to Nash, takes him with it out high. Looks, now he'll pull it down, shoot another deep one, bounces off the rim, Cherry with the board. He'll get it off to Edlin. The Braves can't rely on just no, threes. They're, they're gonna have to run some offense. Edlin with it, deep pass down low to Cherry. He goes up strong and one as he hits it. And he scores his eighth point here in this first quarter and he'll have a chance for the three point play. Bucket's good, Agnew picks up his second foul. As Cherry goes to the line. He's got eight already looking for yeah. his ninth point here in this uh, first quarter play. Free throws up and it's good. 14 to eight here. 2.38 to go here in the first quarter play. Back the other way for the Braves. Schuler gets it out high. Number four checked in. Kennedy, he'll get it off. 31 with it now, that's Missy. He'll get it back out high to Nash. Over there to Kennedy, far side. They go down low on the block, spin, and shot up and good. 31 Missy scores. His first point of the night, and it's 14 to 10. 
Temple back the other way for the Musketeers. He'll bring it across the timeline, gets it off to Gibson. Back to Temple, far side to Bannett, back out high to Caden. Off to Gibson, he goes inside. Edlin pulls it down and a foul gonna be called on the floor. I believe 32 is gonna be yep, guilty. That's who they got. Keith got his first. Inbounds by the Musketeers from the baseline. They'll flip it out high to Gibson. He'll pull it down, hands it off to Temple. Temple with it, way out high on the floor. He'll go on the attack, gets it to Edlin far side. Nancy with it, kicks it back out to Terry. Terry looking, gets it off to Bannett. Three ball in the air, off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Eastern, though, back up. Terry can't get it to go. Rebound pulled down there by Kennedy. He'll get it off to Nash for the Braves. Braves the other way. Nash will drive, pulls up, got it. He's on fire again. <laughs> He's got it his eighth point. 14 to 12, up and down here in this first quarter. Temple now on the attack, and ball tipped away from him, but he got bailed out. They're going to call another foul on Borden. 31 miss, he'll pick up his first foul. Team four. Cherry comes back in. Yeah, Cherry and Anderson back in for Edlin and Bannett for the Musketeers. Gibson inbound for Eastern. He looks, throws it out to Anderson, tipped away, steal by Borden. Another turnover by the Musketeers. Edlin, or excuse me, Nash will pull it down. He drives, kicks it out. Three ball in the air. Shot up there by 32's Keith. No good. Rebound pulled down by Cherry. Temple up quickly in the corner. Anderson's three ball off the mark. Cherry with fighting for the rebound. Pulled down by uh, Gibson. Now about to Temple Hill drive. And he scores, but it's going to be waved off. Nice job by number 32 to step in there yep. and take that charge. He was set before so, Temple even left the floor. Yep, Temple gets his first foul. Team second. Here comes Fuller Tucker back in the game as he'll check in for Kennedy for Borden. 14 to 12 here. Musketeers on top, Borden with the basketball. They'll bring it across. Missy will bring it across the timeline for the Braves. They'll hold it here with 30 seconds. Looks like they want to go for the last shot of this quarter. Missy just content to dribble out high. Probably go on the attack here with about 15 seconds or so. 20 seconds, clock winding down here in the first quarter. Braves trail by two, 14 to 12. Missy now with 10 seconds, gets it off full side. Fuller Tucker off the Nash. He'll wheel around, step back, throws it baseline. They drive, go in strong, and got nice it. Nice bucket. As number 11, Shula scores at the buzzer. And it's tied at 14. So a quick pace here in this first quarter of play by both teams. And you see Doc Nash out on the floor pumping his guys up. You know, that's that's the quarter that they're looking for. Cherry came out, had a great quarter. You know, score I don't I don't know how many points he had, but I think it was he eight, had nine. nine. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Kaysom Nash comes out, he's knocking them down. But it's the other guys, the other guys for Borden who keep them in this quarter. Yeah, and, absolutely. And Borden Borden just like uh, West Washington, they gotta play team ball. They can't rely on uh, Nash to do all the scoring for him. Same way with Eastern, really. I mean, even though Cherry has that mismatch uh, down low, uh, and they fed him a lot in that first quarter, but they're going to have to have some other guys score as well. So tied at 14, here's we'll uh, head into the second quarter. Yeah. We've got uh, some competition for the best Santa in the building. There, <laughs> yeah, I there's, saw that. There's one in Borden. They got a couple uh, of them too, Borden don't they? student section <laughs> that is uh, pretty, pretty spot on. So coming into the second quarter of play here, tie game 14-14. Um, you know, who wins the next three is, is what this game is going to come down to. Yeah, absolutely. Eastern will get the ball out of the quarter break here to start the second quarter of action. Tied at 14. Edlin will inbound. He'll get it into Temple. Caden will bring it across the timeline. They'll set things up here. 
2-3 zone by the Braves. Get it off to Anderson. Anderson back out to Temple, far side to Terry. Terry looking, now back out to Temple. Back over there it goes to Terry. Terry inside pass to Edlin. He'll spin, throw it up, got it. Yancey with his uh, first bucket of the night. The Braves try to do, you know, a, a, almost a triple team on Terry down low, just putting bodies on him. Nash with it. Gets it off to Fuller Tucker. He'll pull it down now and reset the offense. He'll hand it off to Kaysen Nash. Far side to uh, number 11 there, that's Schuler. He'll get it. Now back out to Schuler. He'll pull it down, shoot a deep three, and ooh, ooh. air ball. And that goes out of bounds. Doc is not going to be happy about that one. Number 35 will check in Schmidt, sophomore at 6-3 for the Braves. And he'll come in and Gibson back in for the Musketeers here. So he'll check in. Temple going to get a break too. Yeah, he probably needs one here as they bring, who they bring in? Oh, Gibson, Gibson checked in as well. Yeah, Edlin now to bring it up for the Musketeers with Temple on the bench. Yancey across the timeline, gets it off to Anderson, in the corner goes to Gibson, back to Anderson, out to Edlin. Edlin with it, directing traffic here now. He'll set it up, gets it off to Gibson, far side to Edlin. Edlin, cross courts over to Anderson, back out high to Gibson. Gibson, back to Edlin. 16-14 here, Musketeers. Back out to Edlin. They're trying to feed Cherry down there, and Borden's doing a great job with Tucker dropping down, covering the front side of that. Yeah, now they'll move Cherry up to the free throw line. Eastern just going to be content to hold it here and try to get Borden to come out of this 2-3 zone. Yeah, well, we've seen Doc Nash do this before. Oh, yeah. He's not coming out of this. No, he'll <laughs> sit right there. Only down two. He's going to he's gonna take his chances. Gibson off to Anderson. Now back to Gibson over to Edlin. Edlin looking. Throws it off to Terry on the far wing. Cross court. Almost threw it over Gibson's head, but uh, he gets it back over to Edlin. Edlin back to Gibson. Gibson back to Edlin. And a foul going to be called. I think they're going to call it the other way on Cherry. Going to call it on Cherry. Yeah, they say he was pushing off. Not so sure. That's not a bad call. I think the official saw him fighting for position in there. He kind of shoved off. Yeah. So Borden with the... Uh, turnover there against the Musketeers and Cherry picks up his first foul. So the Braves get it back. They'll bring it across the timeline. Shuler with it. Hands it off to Fuller Tucker. Tucker with it. Now another whistle down low. This one's going to go against Borden, I believe. Number 32, Keith will pick up his get it coming back second. the other way. So Keith picks up his second foul. <laughs> Doc Nash is not happy either way. <laughs> Team's fifth foul. As they bring Temple back in, he'll check in for Terry, and the Musketeers back the other way with it now. Two-point lead for Eastern. Temple bring it across the timeline, goes far side to Gibson, down low to Cherry. He'll spin, throw it up, can't get it to go. Edlin there for the rebound, and that's what Yancey does. Yeah, he fights he's gonna, inside. He's going to get those offensive rebounds and go back up with it. He scores his seventh point of the night. 18-14, a four-point lead for the Musketeers. Fuller Tucker with it. Gets it inside there. Now they get it out to Nash. Kaysen with it. Off to Fuller Tucker. He'll drive. Drives inside. Beats Cherry to the hole. Throws it up high, but a rebound pulled down by Temple. On the miss there. Temple with it. Off to Anderson. He'll shoot the three. Off the mark. Edlin there again. Tries to tip it in. Can't get it to go, but got his own rebound. I tell you, Yancey works hard, man. Yeah, he's all over the place pulling down stuff. So, Off to Temple, far side. Inside to Cherry, he'll spin, draws the crowd, can't get it to go. And Borden pulls it out of there. They'll get it off to Nash. Nash back the other way. He looks, kicks it off there to 32 Keith, back out to Nash. Nash will wheel around. Looking, now goes on the attack. Temple on him, gets it off. Fuller Tucker with it. Hits it over here. Number 11, Schuler back to Tucker. 
Tucker drives, pulls up, eight-footer, can't get it to go, rebound Anderson. Anderson pulls it down, gets it off to Edlin. 18-14, Musketeers with a four-point lead. Anderson with it out to Temple. Temple back to Anderson. Inside the cherry baseline. He'll whip it out to Temple for the three, and Temple buries it. 21-14, so the Musketeers pushed it out to a seven-point lead. As we'll take a quick break here. Full timeout by the Braves. And uh, you're listening to the championship game here, the holiday tournament on your home for Senator Sports, West Washington live stream. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday, 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. All right, we're back here live as a timeout by Borden called here with 3.44 to go in the first half. The Musketeers pushing it out to a seven-point advantage, 21-14. to 14. Coach Nash uh, seen all that he uh, needed to see and called a timeout here to settle his team down here a little bit. Eastern's done a good job on the defensive end. They've really covered up Case and Nash. Jake, or Cherry on the uh, drive, and he got it to go and one as uh, Cherry comes over and commits the foul. So Fuller Tucker with the drive to the basket. The basket was good. Nice bucket there by Fuller Tucker to put that in. That was number 30, Jacob Cherry. Jacob Cherry's second foul, and that'll put uh, Fuller Tucker at the line. Tried to complete this three-point play, and that's their first bucket of the second half here. Chance to... Uh, Cut into the lead here a little bit as he knocks the free throw down. Cuts the lead to four. Yep, 21-17. Little pressure here, kind of a one-two-two uh, trap for the Braves as Edwin gets it across to Cherry. He'll throw it across court to Anderson. Anderson will pull it down. They leave him three-pointer in the air and a whistle. Going to be a foul called down low, I believe. Push going to be called against Borden. See who the foul's called on uh, number 11, Schuler, going to be guilty of the personal. So the Musketeers will inbound underneath their own bucket here. Edlin to throw it in for the Musketeers and a whistle. They call it another one. Yeah, that's Cherry. Cherry. He cleared out, and Cherry just picked up his third personal. Well, the Braves have done a good job shutting him down. He had nine points that first quarter and hadn't scored here. Now he goes to the bench with three fouls. So this kind of changes the dynamics yeah. um, for the Musketeers. And, you know, we've seen that before when, when West Washington played them earlier in the year. Fuller Tucker to bring it up. He'll get it across almost stolen there by uh, Cody Bannett, but it tipped out of bounds. So it'll go back to the Braves. Missy to inbound. Missy will get it in. It'll come in to Fuller Tucker. Back to Missy. Missy here on the near wing looking. Gets it off to Kaysom Nash. Nash, far side with it. Goes over there to Schuler. We're going to see Aiden Miller check in soon, I'm sure. Yeah, off to Terry. Now back out high it comes to Nash. Nash wheels around, drives, gets cut off there down low. Now pulls up, shoots it off the rim. No good. Rebound. Nancy Edlin. Yeah, Edlin all over the place. Yes, he is. He plays hard. Anderson back over to Edlin. Back to Anderson. And off to Temple. Back to Anderson. Far side to Edlin. Edlin over to Anderson. Back to Temple. Back to Edlin. 
Kind of a one, one, three, one type yeah. zone here. Edlin will pull it down, shoot the three ball, and he got another one. That's his second three-pointer of the night. He's got seven in this quarter, ten for the game. And he pushes it out to 24-17. Shot up no good. Rebound Anderson. He'll pull it down, tries to get it up to Temple. He does. Temple dribbles baseline out to Anderson. He'll wheel around, drives the lane, dishes down low to Terry. Blocked from behind by Borden. Ash comes down and out of there with it. Ash the other way. He'll get it off there to Missy. Missy drives, and he gets fouled as they're going to get uh, Terry, I believe, on that uh, yeah, Terry, blocking foul. Terry was moving as he drove to the lane. So. Yeah, Missy will go to the line. Terry picks up his first personal, team six. So that'll put Missy at the free throw line. He'll have a couple free throws coming here. 150 to go here in the first half. He misses the first one. He'll get another one. Here comes Miller into the game for the first time for the Musketeers. Aiden Miller, the sophomore at 6'8", will check in. Miller, a big body. He is a big kid. And Missy back at the free throw stripe. His second one's up, and that one rims out two. Rebound, however, by Borden. Agnew pulls it down. He'll get it out to Nash. Deep three ball off the mark. Edlin fights for it. Almost stolen out of there, but it's going to go back to Eastern. That was tipped out by Schuler for the Braves, so Musketeers get it back. Full court pressure here by Borden. Eastern beats it, gets it up the floor to Bannett. He'll drive, throws up a runner, can't get it to go. Rebound battle four, pulled down by Borden. Back the other way with it. Missy tries to get it down there to Terry. Tipped out of bounds, or excuse me, Fuller Tucker. And it'll go back to the Braves. Terry will check right back in for Miller. 128 to go here. 24-17 Eastern with that seven-point lead. Borden's only scored three points this quarter. They get it inside there. Spin. And he traveled. He traveled. He, travel. he, he covered a lot of ground there. Schuler uh, had the opportunity, the but just took one too many steps. Miller. Miller back into the game for Eastern. They're going offense for defense yep. here. 116 to go. Seven point lead. Trying to build on it here are the Musketeers. They'll get it into Temple. Temple off to Edlin. Nancy back over here to Caden Temple. Back to Edlin. Cross court to Anderson. Back out high comes to Temple. He'll pull it down far side to Edlin. Back out to Temple. Temple to Edlin. Looking down low. Now he'll hold it here with 45 seconds. Count comes, Edlin has to move now. Gets it off to Temple. Caden almost loses it, and a foul gonna be called on Nash as he just kind of fouled him from behind. His first, team seventh, that'll be free throws for Eastern here. Fouls pretty even, yeah. seven, six. So. I haven't seen a whole lot of free throws in this game yet. <laughs> Terry will check in, but Temple will go to the line, and he's almost automatic up there. Yeah, he knocked down quite a few. Yeah, last night he was almost perfect from the line. He'll have a one-on-one -on -one free throw opportunity. First one's up, and it's good. 25-17 here, an eight-point lead. Second free throw coming here for Temple. He'll step back to the line. It's up, and that one rims out. Rebound pulled down there by Schuler. He'll hand it off to Fuller Tucker, and Derek will bring it up the court. Comes across the timeline. Fuller Tucker with it. With 24 seconds. Borden going to try to get a good shot here to go into the halftime break. I wouldn't be surprised they don't try to set up something for Nash. Yeah. Either. I think everybody in the gym knows that one. For Tucker with 10 seconds. Gets it off to Nash. Back to Tucker. Seven seconds. He'll go on the attack now. Blows by everybody. Kicks it out to Nash. He'll drive. Goes in strong and a charging foul. 
They get Nash for his second personal. Player control foul, so it won't be free throws. It'll be out of bounds to Eastern with .2 seconds to go here in the first half. They'll get it into Temple, and that's the end of the first half here. So the Musketeers go in with a eight-point advantage here as they lead it at the half, 25-17. to 17. We're going to take a quick break, add things up, and we'll be back here with your halftime stats here as you're listening to the championship game of the holiday tournament here on your home for Senator Sports, West Washington live stream and WWSR. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family-owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, Donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions, big and small, to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone, to our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And Commissioner, holiday time, lots of tournaments, lots of uh, one-day extravaganzas, irrespective of the sports. And so, you know, it's going to be one of those kinds of times where people are just having as much fun as they can. And you're out there having fun. And one of the things we remind people is when you go to a game, sportsmanship is a real thing, and we'd like to see it because these are officials who aren't full-time. Uh, they're not uh, doing this for a living. They're doing this to make an extra buck and to help kids have some fun. So I want to underscore how important that is for everybody involved. I think that's exactly right, Coach. And, you know, I, often for me perspective comes to mind when I think about officials and when you look about the parents, the student athletes, the coaches, uh, the fans. Uh, and it's about keeping perspective of what, what we're trying to do uh, in an environment the student athletes get to grow up in. And, you know, 
officials don't make a primary living as a, a, a and as a matter of fact, they really only make gas money in a lot of places, you know, less than $100 to officiate a varsity basketball contest. But they choose to do that because the game really meant something to them at some point in their lives. And, you know, they want to give back. And, you know, a lot of our ex-athletes, former players, former coaches even out officiating for us now. And, and they just want to do it so kids can have an opportunity to play just like they were able to do. Uh, many years ago in many cases. So, you know, perspective is so important when we look at games that, that kids play. Well, I think we, we take it way too personally. I think we forget this simple concept that everybody in between those black lines, everybody along the side, scores, bench, benches, all that other stuff, everyone on the court, everyone on the benches, everyone at the scores table will make a mistake. Everyone will make one. Uh, hopefully not very many, but they'll make one. Coaches will make mistakes. Kids will make mistakes. Timer will hit the wrong button. Score will get the wrong uh, the wrong player. Officials, yes, they make mistakes. They, they really, really do. And since we're trying to be teaching kids lessons, we don't want the lesson to be that when things don't go your way, you go ballistic and act like an idiot. Not to, you know, maybe cut to the chase there. That's one thing we're not trying to teach. We're trying to teach how to understand and accept problems as they come and adjust and do the best you can. Well said, Coach. You know, it's just so important to keep that in, in mind. And, and it is about adjusting. It's about learning the life lessons. You know, one of the things I often try to say is, you know, when you think about sport, we have a game that we all love, whether it's whatever it is that we offer, but it's it was officiated by human beings, created by human beings, played by human beings, coached by human beings, and watched mm-hmm. by human mm-hmm. beings. And, 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 and I often say only one perfect person walked this earth, and my mom's not sure. officiating tonight. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> we need to make sure that we keep it all in perspective along the way and understand that human beings are the imperfect much as we try not to be, but they are, and then mistakes are made. Well, the issue nowadays is you uh, at the association find it very, very difficult to find uh, the right number of officials. You're compromised in terms of football and basketball tournaments because you're you're literally running out of officials to officiate these kinds of events. That, that's exactly right, Coach. And, and you know, and so far we're we're working hard to get more officials in. And you can go to our website at ihsa.org and sign up to become official and we love people when they do that but you know regionally uh we have some real shortages in the state you know if you go to the north uh, west corner of the state of indiana we have a, a real struggle to get football officials and other places it may be track and field or soccer and you know it's still uh, you know there are still areas where we have a lot of officials uh we still have a lot of basketball officials in the state but we can always use one more He's the commissioner of the IHSAA. It's Paul Nighting. This is our weekly conversation about all things IHSAA related. Commissioner, holidays here. Have a happy holiday. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, best of luck to everybody involved with the IHSAA. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Nidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. All right, back here live West Washington High School here. Halftime of the holiday tournament championship game between the Musketeers and the Borden Braves. Uh, As Eastern Musketeers lead here 25-17 at the half. Just real quick, first half scoring, the Musketeers were led by Yancey Edlin. He had uh, two three-pointers and two two two-point field goals. He's got 10 to lead all scores in the game here tonight at the half. Jacob Cherry with uh, four field goals, one free throw for nine. Uh, Caden Temple with a three-pointer and a free throw for four. And uh, Cody Bannett with a two-point field goal to give Eastern they're 25. Not a lot of scoring for Borden, not like what we've seen uh, in that first game against uh, the Lions last night, but Kaysom Nash leads the Braves. He's got two three-pointers and one two-point field goal. He's got eight points to lead the Braves. Uh, Fuller Tucker with uh, five points, Schuler with two, and Missy with two to give them their 17. The Braves only with three points in that second quarter, you know, as it was 
tied at the end of the first quarter, 14 all. Musketeers went on a run there and uh, outscored uh, the Braves 11 to three in that second quarter. So an eight point uh, turnaround and uh, that's where we're at here at the half, 25-17. And like we said, to start off the game, if you want somebody to figure out what to do in a oh, yeah. short turnover of time, Doc Nash is the one to do it. So we're gonna see what he drew up in the locker room for uh, his Borden Braves and, and what his answer is gonna be to you know the the eastern big you know cherry in the post he they i feel like they did the best they could in the oh, first yeah. half defending well they got him, him in foul trouble yeah he, you know he went out of the game with three fouls they done what they needed to do against cherry they just didn't get enough shots up and give eastern's defense credit they've played really well um you know to this point as eastern will come back on the floor here to start the third quarter They'll have uh, Yancey Edlin, Caden Temple, Brody Temple in the game for the first time for them. Uh, also Anderson and Bannett. And the Braves will come back with Fuller Tucker, Kasem Nash, uh, number 31, uh, Missy. Uh, and also they'll, they'll have number 11, Alex Schuler, along with uh, number 24, uh, A.J. Agnew. Agnew with it, off far side it goes. Over there to uh, number 11, Schuler. Now over to Agnew. Agnew back out high to Missy. Missy down low as he kicks it out. Three ball in the air and no good. Rebound by Caden Temple. He'll get it off to Bannett. Bannett up quickly. Drives, throws it up. Can't get it to go. Rebound board in this case. And Nash comes out there with it. Nash up quickly looking. Gets it over here on the far side. 31, Missy with it. Back out. Deep three by Nash. And he starts to heat up again. So 25-20, five-point game here. That's what you do when you're a yep. senior and your team's down, that you put them on your back and come down and drain a three. Caden Temple off to Brody Temple, now to Bannett, top of the circle, off to Anderson here on the near wing. He kicks it out to Edlin, Yancey with it, looking. Now kicks it off to Brody Temple, inside pass, goes down low to Bannett, he'll score the basket. 27-20, back to a seven point lead here for the Musketeers. Steal there by the Braves, turn it over to Musketeers. Bannett gets it, kicks it out. Anderson's three, off the mark. Rebound inside, Brody Temple, and he scores it. 29-20, nine point advantage here for the Musketeers. Coach Nash wanting to travel on that last one. Fuller Tucker with it now. He'll drive, pulls up, free throw line, got it to go. So he scores again. 29-22. Musketeers back the other way. Brody Temple with it. Or, excuse me, Caden Temple. Both Temples on the floor. <laughs> Edlin with it in the corner. Anderson will shoot another three. Can't get it to go. Rebound put up and in. I ban it. I tell you, the Braves not doing a very good job rebounding. No. And they're small to begin with, so yep. that makes it even worse. Nash with it. He'll get it off to Schuler. Schuler looking. Now back out high. It'll come to Missy. Missy on the attack. Gets it down low. It'll go to Agnew. Back out to Missy. Missy drives. Pulls up. Inside the free throw line. Can't get it. Anderson with the rebound. He'll get it off to Edlin. Nine point lead here for the Musketeers. 31-22. Nancy Edlin brings it across the timeline. Looks, gets it down to Caden Temple. He'll drive, goes in strong. And they're going to say he hooked him. They're going to call <laughs> that against uh, Temple, I believe. Yeah. Nope, they're going to call it against, yeah, Brody Temple, the yeah. younger Temple. His first. His team's first here in the second half. Fuller Tucker to inbound. He'll get it into Missy. Missy will bring it up for the Braves. As he'll cross the timeline. Gets it off here to Schuler, back to Missy. Missy out high to Kaysom Nash, tipped away from him by Edmund. And it will go back to the Braves here. Nash with it, inbounds. So he'll get it into Missy. Missy goes down low there, free throw line shot up, no good. Rebound, however, by Agnew, back up. He can't get it, get it back again, goes up. Can't get it again, but he's fouled. So Agnew I, underneath 
three doing a great times, job. Yeah, yep. going up, getting his own rebound without Cherry on the floor. Brody Temple in there trying to get there, but just can't get it to drop. So Agnew's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, Temple, uh, Brody Temple, second foul. And Agnew will go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He hadn't scored yet in this game, but he does there. First free throws up and good. Agnew picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter. Yeah, he did. I Had to sit for a while. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Second free throw coming here for Agnew. It's up and rims out the back of the rim. No good. Anderson with the rebound. Morton just needs points. They just haven't had a lot of opportunities. Temple down, kicks it in the corner, man it for a three, and he buried it. Man, it's hot this quarter. Yeah. He's got seven here in this quarter. 34-23, and the ball tipped out of bounds, goes back to Borden as Bannon almost comes up with the steal. Nashed inbound, he'll get it in to Missy. Missy gets it over here to Shuler, back to Missy. He'll wheel around, goes back out high to Shuler. Shuler gets cut off now, drives far side, drives, throws up a runner off the glass, no good, rebound Temple. Temple pulls it down, gets it off to Edlin. Edlin up quickly with it, pulls it down. Throws it inside to Brody Temple. He'll drive, and he just picked up his third person. Yep, good position there by the Braves as they draw the charge. You see Temple's parents on the camera there. They're not very happy with that call there. That's a good call. I mean, he turned with his shoulder and kind of dropped it a little bit. You're going to get that every time so Brody Temple with three now especially when you're six three six four yeah. you're gonna Braves bring it back up Missy with it gets it off so he'll hit it over there to Shuler off to Nash far side back over here to Missy and to Agnew free throw line he got it. Agnew with his third point 34-25 back to a nine point lead here by the Musketeers 340 to go in the third quarter Caden Temple with it, off the bandit, back to Temple. Now over here to Anderson, inside to Edlin. He draws a crowd, out to Temple. Temple off to Anderson, back to Temple, far side to Bannett. Back to Temple, back to Bannett. He'll shoot it, deep ball, in and out, no good. Tipped off of Brody Temple, out of bounds to the Braves. Cherry has sat this whole quarter, hasn't been on yep. the floor yet. So they've, they've really stolen some time with him on the bench. Right. Missy will bring it up for the Braves. Down nine here. Brings it across the timeline. Kicks it inside to Agnew. And they're going to get the Fuller Tucker. He did. He dropped his uh, shoulder. You can't do that. That's going to be a charging uh, foul. Pressure here by the Braves, I believe. Yep, they're going to go to full court pressure. That's Tucker's first, so he's not any in any foul trouble. Musketeers will get it into Temple, back to Edlin, back to Temple. He gets it across to Brody Temple. Now out to Anderson for the three, and he got it. His first bucket of the night, a three-pointer. That's a big one. 37-25 now, biggest lead of the night at 12. This one's starting to get a little bit away from Borden. You know, they stretched out this lead even more. And, and Doc's trying to come up with something to do. He's throwing all kinds of different defenses, but Eastern just keeps knocking down those three-pointers. Well, they just haven't uh, worked as hard to get their shooters open. You know, Nash has only got up one shot here in this third quarter, and it was a three. He knocked it down. But, you know, they've only scored uh, eight points here in this quarter to uh, Eastern. You know, they've, they've put up 12, so... Um, had that lead at the half, and they're just building on it here. And they've done it by moving the basketball around and, and uh, got Cody Bannett hot. You know, he's got uh, six points or seven points here in this quarter. So, Musketeers will come back out after the timeout by Nash. As the Braves will inbound here. Kaysom Nash to put the ball back into play. 2.50 to go here in the third quarter. Braves down 12. They'll kick it into Missy. He'll bring it up for Borden. Across the timeline. Gets it off to Nash. Chasing with it. 
And there it'll go to Schuler. Back inside to Schuler now. And almost stolen away from him. It comes back to Nash. Nash off to Missy. Inside to Agnew. He'll kick it out. Schuler with it. Back to Agnew. Back to Schuler. He goes in strong. Up. Can't score it though. And Brody Temple with the board. That's what is hurting Borden right yep. now. They're getting up shots inside, but they're unable to knock them down. Yeah, they just haven't been able to hit anything. Edlin with it here on the near wing. He'll dribble into the free throw line, kicks it out to Anderson. Anderson wheels around, gets cut off, hands it back to Edlin. He's trapped here at half court. Timeout. 158 to go here in the third period. And the timeout there by Coach Weatherford as Edlin got trapped there at the timeline. We'll take a quick break here. Be back here. It's Musketeers 37, the Braves 25. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nardi. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. All right, back here live to West Washington High School. Championship game here of the holiday tournament. Musketeers has pushed it out to a 12-point lead, 37-25. With a minute 58 to go here in the third period of play as uh, Borden just looking for some kind of answer offensively. They just haven't been able to get up a lot of shots, and uh, not like last night when they scored 67 points right. in the game. You know, they've got uh, 25 here and late in the third quarter. Got to get some stops, and they got to get uh, something going offensively if they want to get back in this thing. Caden Temple on the inbounds from Gibson, now to Anderson. Anderson drives far side. Dishes baseline there to Brody Temple. He'll kick it out to his brother, Caden. Caden wheels around, goes in the lane, throws up a one-hander, can't get it to go. Tipped out of bounds. It'll go back to Eastern. Looked like Braves were going to get it back there, but the official didn't see it that way. Yeah. They'll inbound to Anderson. He'll hand it off to Temple. Back to Anderson. Anderson, far side, gets it out to Temple. Back out to Anderson. Now to Gibson. Inside goes to Brody. They turn it over. And back the other way. Borden with it. Gets it out. Nash, deep three. That air ball. Rebound, however, underneath. They'll get it back out. Schuler, no good. Rebound pulled down by Gibson. They'll get it off to Temple. Now, Braves just not shooting it like they did yeah, last that. night. Their percentage has not been very good. Anderson will drive, throws up a runner, can't get it to go. Brody Temple there for the rebound. He'll kick it out, Terry. Now out to Temple. Caden Temple on the drive, drives inside and scores it. They try to set up and take a charge there, but not gonna get that call. No, 39-25, 14 point lead, biggest of the night. And the Braves turn it over again. As Keith threw it out of bounds. It didn't help that the person he was throwing it to slipped. Yeah, so. yeah, he did. Caden Temple with it. He'll bring it across the timeline, gets it off to Anderson. I was watching Coach Nash really yeah. in the ear of the <laughs> official. Gibson pulls it down now. He'll dribble around, gets it off to Temple. Temple trapped here at the half court line. They're going to get a foul against Borden. And the 31 miss, he picks up his second personal. Only the second team foul, so neither team yeah, really neither team committed really a lot. Close here. Yeah. Gibson then bound here. He'll get it in to Caden Temple. He'll drive, goes in strong, throws it up, can't get it. Battle for the rebound, and Agnew comes out there with it. He'll get it off to Kaysen Nash. Nash down quickly, spins, kicks it in the corner. Shot up, and good. 
at the buzzer there by Schuler as he knocks it down. So the Braves score and it's 39-27 here at the end of the third quarter. So we'll take a quick break and come back here. On your home, you're listening to West Washington live stream and WWSR. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Well, All right, there. back here live West Washington tonight in the, 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 the championship the game of the holiday tourney. Eastern Musketeers with a 12-point lead here as we head into the fourth quarter. Edlund inbound for Eastern. He'll get it into Anderson. He'll hand it off to Temple. Braves trying to scrap back into it. Edlin with it now, far side. Back out to Temple. Anderson back to Temple. Temple looking, goes back over to Edlin. Edlin. Over to Temple. Temple inside, stolen. Turnover Musketeers. Fuller Tucker drives, goes to the hoop and got it. He scores again. 10-point advantage, 39-29. Temple with it. He'll kick it out to Edlin. Edlin back over to Temple. Temple far side to Anderson. Anderson pulls it down off to Edlin. Edlin with it. Edlin in the corner. He'll get it back out to Temple. Now down low, cross courts to Anderson. Over to Edlin. Inside to Cherry, back in the game, and he dunks it. And one, I believe he's gonna go to the free throw line. Cherry with the slam and a chance to complete the three-point Get him on the back side of yeah. it once he's up in the air. That was on Fuller Tucker, his second. And Cherry with the opportunity for the three-point play. Kind of hard to stop that. Yeah. You know. So he'll step up there. Free throws up and it's good as well. So he scored it again in the double figures, 42-29. Braves get it off to Schuler. Schuler inside goes to Schmidt. Now baseline full of Tucker with the runner. Got it to go. 42-31. Yeah, just trading trade buckets. Trade is not going to help you. No. Temple goes down low in the corner to Bannett. Back out to Temple. Far side to Anderson. Out to Edlin. Back over to Temple, corner to Bannett. He'll drive baseline, dishes inside, stolen. Nash comes out there with it. He'll bring it up quickly for the Braves, gets it off. Fuller Tucker with it. He drives, pulls up in the free throw line, got another one, he's hot. Cut the lead to nine. 42-33, 6.09 to go here in the contest. Anderson in the corner to Cherry. Cherry back out to Anderson, Edlin. Edlin with it, out to Temple. Temple in the corner to Bannett, back to Temple, right away over to Anderson. Gordon gonna have to come out of this a little bit to uh, put a little pressure on Eastern. Edlin with it, cross court to Temple. He pulls it down, looking. Goes way over in the corner to Edlin. Inside to Cherry, he'll spin and score it again. 44 to 33. With this zone, Cherry's able to sit yep. down there in it and get fed. Schuler with it. Gets it off to Nash. Jason in the corner. Terry. Fuller Tucker with the shot. No good. A foul on the floor. I believe that's going to go against Edlin. That's 
That's his first. Team's fourth here as uh, Nash will inbound underneath his own bucket. He gets it in there. Fuller Tucker pulls it down, goes up, and he scores it. Oh, he calls it travel. Oh, my, and a turnover on Borden. Oh, I thought for yeah. sure he scored the basket. I thought he was fouled, too, but yeah. no call by the <laughs> official calls it travel. Crowd not happy about it here on our side here for Borden. Temple with it over to Edlin. Looks like he traveled with <laughs> it. Edlin back over to Temple. Now in the corner to Anderson. Looking inside, gets it to Cherry, and he's fouled. Fuller Tucker just picked up his third. Cherry will go to the line. Fuller Tucker comes over and gets coached up and figures out what. Cherry with the free throw. First one's up and it's good. 45-33. Back to a 12-point lead here for the Musketeers. Second opportunity up, and he gets them both. Timeout called by Coach Weatherford for the Musketeers. 13-point lead, biggest of night here. We'll take a quick one, full timeout. We'll be back here, Eastern 46, Borden Braves 33. In 2015, we launched the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. This is phase two of the Happily Ever After project. With the assistance of several local donors and sponsors, along with five years of fundraising by the Washington County Youth Foundation, we finally had enough resources to launch the service. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is a free service that mails age-appropriate books to all required Washington County children under the age of five. Although the faces of the leadership of the Washington County Community Foundation have changed over time, as is always the case with any healthy, thriving organization, the core values and mission remain the same. We continue to work diligently to assist our donors in creating a legacy that is meaningful to them. All of our success is directly related to the generosity of the sons and daughters of Washington County. We will continue to help our donors give back to our community through our foundation and improve the quality of life in our county. We're back live here at uh, West Washington on the Ron Smith Court where Borden is trailing by 13 to Eastern. 46-33 is a uh, timeout here. It's 4.54 to go in the contest. Uh, Braves with it. Get it out to Nash over here. Fuller Tucker inside Agnew. He'll pull it down. Back out. Fuller Tucker into Agnew. Free throw line shot. And he got it. Agnew scores again, and it is 46-35. Musketeers back the other way. It's like Borden just kind of trading baskets. They can't yeah. eat into this lead. Edlin with it, cross court, gets it to Bannett, inside to Cherry. He goes up tall, and they just, you just can't stop that. Yeah. 48-35. Fuller Tucker with it. He'll drive, goes in strong, throws up a runner, can't get it to go. Battle for the board, and Edlin pulls it out of there for the Musketeers. He'll pull it down, gets it up to Temple. Caden Temple with it, down to Cherry. He'll spin, scores again. 50-35, 15-point lead, biggest of night here. Inside they go, do the Braves to Schuler, and he gets fouled. He's going to get fouled from yeah. behind there. I believe Bannett going to be guilty. That'll be his first. Team's fifth here, 343 to go, and the Braves down 15. Fuller tuckered inbound as he looks to get it in here. Can't find anybody. Finally gets it into Agnew. Out to Nash. Down to the baseline. Fuller Tucker drives. Goes in strong. Got it to go. He scores again. He's got eight here in this quarter. He's about the only one doing any scoring yeah. for him. Edlin up quickly with it. Gets shut down there. Gets it off to Bannett. Bannett back to Edlin. Off to... Uh, 
Edlund drives, pulls up, and can't get it to go. Rebound, however, by Anderson. He'll go in strong, and a charging foul going to be called. There's two Borden Braves on the ground there. I don't know which one actually took the charge, but. <laughs> I believe Agnew, so Anderson picks up his second. Team six. Missy comes back in the game four for Tucker. Missy will bring it up quickly. Drives in the lane, goes in strong, can't get it to go. Rebound put back up and in by 35 Schmidt. He scores his first bucket of the night. Braves just trying to do what they can here. Edlin with it. Throws it down and stolen by Agnew. Agnew off to Nash. 50 to 39. Nash spins. Backs up, shoots a deep three ball, and it hits the top of the rim there, top of the backboard, out of bounds to Easton. Braves on a little run trying to cut in, but, man, they just haven't been able to get it down yeah. under 10. Every time, every time they get yep. close, it just balloons back out. Off to Anderson. He'll drive, throws it up for Cherry, and a slam. And a technical. Got him again for it. Well, there, there's a big emphasis on that. Big emphasis on the swing after the yeah. dunk. Basket's good, but uh, he gets called for the technical foul. That'll be his fourth. Whoops. Yeah, his fourth. And Eastern it, crowd doesn't yeah, like it at all. Nash at the line. First free throws up and no good. Not been case of Nash's night. They've just, Eastern's done a really good job on him as he just hasn't been able to get a whole lot of shots to fall. Second free throw up and it's good. 52 to 40. And a timeout called here by. Yeah, Doc Nash Morton. gonna take a timeout. We're gonna go ahead and step aside with a full timeout. We'll be back for the completion of the game here in just a moment. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. All right, back here live West Washington High School. 2.32 to go here in the championship game against Eastern and Borden here. 52 to 40, Musketeers up by 12. Borden inbound as they'll throw it in full of Tucker. will get it in. Messi back over here to Schuler. Now off to Schuler. Free throw line shot. He got it. Schuler scores again. 10 point game. It's about as close as Borden's been able to get. Yeah. Temple with it, goes to Bannett. He'll drive, throws up a runner, and he gets it to Cherry for the slam. And we got an injured Brave down there. Somebody was underneath uh, Bannett and Cherry when he went up for the dunk. Not exactly sure what happened there. Cherry up to 24 points in this game. Agnew got, well, he got fell on basically. Uh, when Bannett threw the alley-oop and Cherry dunked it, he come down on the back of uh, Agnew's head. And Agnew's gonna come out of the game here as he uh, kinda took a hard shot. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was almost like uh, uh, Hulk Hogan jumping off the top <laughs> rope and landing on your head there. There you go. It's one of them uh, WWE moves, you know. 
So Borden with the basketball, down 12. They just haven't been able to get it much closer than 10. Casey Nash brings it up with 210. Gets it over here to Schuler. Schuler with it, looking. Gets it out to Missy. Missy with it. Gets it inside to Schuler. He'll drive again, goes in strong, and stores it. Fifty-four, forty-four. Back to a ten-point lead. Edlin with it. One forty-three to go. He'll get it across the timeline, and a foul going to be called against Borden. Or nope. They bailed him out with a timeout. Timeout maybe. call. We're going to stick with you here through this timeout. Down to a minute yep. thirty-eight here. Borden trails by ten. Yeah, they're just it, running out of time. Yeah, they just can't chip away at this any more than ten. Eastern, this high-low game. You know, they they put their guards out high, and then they get a quick pass down to Cherry. We've seen them do it a bunch of times yeah. here in the fourth quarter. Like I said, Cherry has a two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen points in this quarter alone. Um, so. They've been doing that just with that high-low game. Yeah. You know, more and and you can do that when you've got yes. a, a big like Cherry underneath. And you've got three guards that can handle the ball really well. Right. You know, Temple, Anderson, and uh, Edmund, Edmund have done a great job with the basketball. And they've been able to feed Cherry whenever uh, they get a mismatch down low. Edmund inbound here on the timeout. <laughs> Edlund inbound and a whistle. Gonna get a foul call, maybe. They'll call it on Schuler. His second. Team's fifth. Gordon with some fouls to give. Yeah, the ball never did come in. The ball got, exactly. It yeah, was a it's foul before be back the ball here. came in. Yeah, they called the foul on the move. The ball never did come in. Official now getting on to Coach Nash here. <laughs> Lob pass inside, they try to get it to Cherry and it'll go back to Borden. Nope, they're gonna overturn that, I believe. It'll go back to Eastern. I think they said that uh, Keith uh, tipped it and knocked it out of bounds for the Braves. Doc Nash has all of the officials yeah, frustrated. Yeah, he's got them frustrated. <laughs> he knows how to do it. Long pass into Anderson. He'll wheel around, gets it off to Edlin. Edlin will drive in the lane. Pulls it down, looks, gets it to Cherry. He'll spin, throw it up, can't get it to go. Rebound, Fuller Tucker up quickly. He'll drive, throws up a runner and a charging foul. He just picked up his fourth. You knew that was coming. Yep, <laughs> knew it was coming. 54-44, one seventeen to go. Borden running out of time here. Anderson with it off to Edmund. He'll break the pressure, brings it up. Kicks it out to Anderson. Back to Temple. Temple chasing, gets it to Anderson. Back out to Edmund. One minute out, Edmund drives. Lost the ball, gets it off to Bannett. Back out to Temple. Temple over to Anderson. He loses it. It's on the floor and a timeout called by Eastern with 48 seconds to go. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside, take our final commercial break, and then be back with you. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. 
Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at youproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. All right, back here live. This game went on forever, it seems like. 54 <laughs> 44, 48 seconds to go. Looks like Eastern's going to get another championship here. If I'm not mistaken, this is their third in a row. Third in a row. Here yep. in the holiday tournament if they get this one. Tempo in the backcourt. Uh, being Chase gets, gets it off to Edmund. He gets it across the timeline. Finally, now he'll drive. Throws it up for Cherry. Just a little too high. Edmund got it back, though. He'll spin. And he gets fouled on the floor. Thirty-one called for the foul. That's missing his third. <laughs> Doc Nash telling his his boys that if they block out, he can't shoot it. It's true, <laughs> and they haven't done a very good job rebounding. Edlin at the line, first time up there for him tonight. He misses it. Temple, however, with the rebound, and they'll pull it out. Anderson in the corner to Bannett. Back out to Anderson. Anderson wheels around, gets it to Temple. Off to Edlin, and he'll hold it. And it looks like the Musketeers are going to win their third holiday tournament in a row. Down to six seconds. And that's going to be it. So 54-44 going to be the final here tonight. Congratulations to the Musketeers going to win the championship. Nice job by Eastern to win their third championship in a row. So they won it at their place in, uh, what was that, 2000? Yeah, yes. 2020. Yep. And then 2021, 21. they won it at Salem. Salem. And then here this year. So they won it three years in a row. Looking for the sweep four in a row next year at Borden. Yeah. So I guess we'll take a quick break come back here with the final game stats and also the presentation of the trophy going on now. Well, we'll stay here. I'll add things up while we do that and we'll do uh, the uh, first Harrison Bank uh, tournament coming to an end here. Athletic tonight. Director Darren Russell presenting the Eastern basketball team with the trophy for the first Harrison Bank holiday tournament uh, championship here. So the all tournament team. Yep. Case of Nash. Case of Nash, first one. Lane Hofler on the boys' from, side. Yep, West Washington. Nancy Edlin gets it from Eastern. Jacob Cherry. From Borden High School, Derek Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker and also from, from Borden. Salem, and Stevenson. from Salem, Justin Stevenson. All, all of them well deserved. Yeah. They all had a good tournament uh, here as they get their picture Fuller here. Tucker Fuller out Tucker there. not out here or Stevenson yet. Here comes Stevenson, Stevenson. Stevenson. coming down. And here comes Fuller Tucker down the steps. Yeah, he had a good game tonight. He ended with 15 points here. He had seven two-point field goals and one free throw did Fuller Tucker as we add this up. And we'll get the final stats to you here real shortly as I try to get them all added up here. Nice job there by the all-tournament team. Uh, great job by the Eastern Musketeers tonight to be able to pull off that victory. Um, last night a little bit of a, a threat by the Senators. And then tonight really just handled it 
other than that first quarter where they played even 14-14, um, you know, the Musketeers were able to, to dominate the rest of the quarters. Um, big part of that is Jacob Cherry underneath, you know, the, the senior 6'10", 6 6'11". 6 6 um, you yeah. know, just a, a force to be reckoned with down there. So, you know, it's it's always a, a, a great thing, you know, when you have a 6'11 guy and then you've got three ball handlers who can handle it, you know, in um, – uh, Yancey Edlin, who, who does a great job, didn't play last night, comes out tonight and just does all of the little things, which probably is, is part of the reason why the Senators were able to stay close to him last night. Um, you know, and, and just a, a great ball team there, especially with first year, uh, <laughs> asterisk on that, first year head coach for Eastern, um, you know, who had been under Doc Nash for 15 years, part of his state championship run. Um, in, his first, in Doc's first couple of years there at Borden, then moves over to Eastern and, and leads them, you know, with a, with a great job of, of kids that they've got and, um, you know, just able to, to I, I wouldn't say right the ship, but, you know, get the most out of the guys that you've got. And when you've got a 6'11", you, you feed him and you let him go to work. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's what he did tonight. Yeah, he sure did as I'm trying to get things added up here uh, from the game. We see Eastern out there passing around the trophy, getting getting some recognition, some great jobs there um, by their players. I see you getting, getting numbers down. Yep, I finally got okay. them down here. So we'll run them down real quick here. Final score here tonight, 54-44. 10-point victory for the Musketeers to win the championship. For Borden in the game tonight, uh, they were led in scoring actually by uh, – Derek Fuller Tucker, he had seven two-point field goals, one for one, one for one at the free throw line for 15 total points. Kaysom Nash, after that 43-point performance last night, Eastern done a good job shutting him down. He had one two-point field goal, three three-pointers, one for two from the free throw line. He finished with 12 points in the game. Uh, Schuler had four field goals for eight points. Uh, Agnew had uh, two field goals, one for two from the line. He finished with five. Missy had one bucket for two, and Schmidt had a bucket for two to give Borden their 44 points. For the victorious Eastern Musketeers, they were led by Jacob Cherry. He had 10 two-point field goals, four for four from the line, 24 total points in this game tonight. Second leading scorer in, in double figures for the Musketeers, Yancey Edlin. He had two two-point field goals, two three-pointers, and he finishes the game with 10 points. Uh, but Cody Bannett had uh, three two-point field goals, one three-pointer in the game. He finishes with nine. Anderson had one three-pointer for three, and Caden Temple had one two-pointer, one three-pointer. He had one of two from the free throw line for six total points in the game for Caden Temple and then Brody Temple had the one bucket for two points to give Eastern their 44 and that's our final here tonight 54-44 Eastern wins their third straight holiday tournament here at uh, West Washington this evening and you know Musketeers uh, they're going to graduate four kids uh, you know uh, four seniors off that team Yancey Edlin, Jacob Cherry uh, Chris Terry and uh, Caden Gibson. But, you know, they got a pretty solid group coming yeah. back uh, next year, and they got a lot of basketball to play yet. They, you know, they could make some noise in that uh, 2A uh, sectional that right. they're in. Um, so, you know, I look for them to uh, to do some things in the postseason um, because they, um, you know, they've got all the weapons. You know, when you've got a kid that, you know, is, uh, is, is 6'11", and like we talked about, that inside-out game, they've got three guards that I thought, you know, if I had to if I had to pick the real difference in the game here tonight, it would definitely be the guard play yeah. of Eastern. Even though Cherry gets all the points, those guards make it happen. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't keep assist, but I would say those guards had <laughs> – you know, quite numerous a assists yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the game, and that'd be Anderson, Temple, and Edlin. And, you know, uh, Yancey did get on the all-tournament team. 
I kind of felt like Caden Temple deserved yeah, that as well. Probably did. Um, you know, but they only put uh, they only put those those six kids on there. But um, you know, they had they had two or three that really you know could have deserved it as well. But uh, you know, great effort here tonight. It was another great tournament, packed house here at West Washington. Appreciate everything that uh, that you've done here for the live stream and also uh, for uh, Darren Russell's worked hard yeah. <laughs> this weekend to uh, to get everything set up and uh, you know it's a great tournament here once again and you know this tournament is so good um, we love it and uh, I think it's it's just great for all the fans and I want to uh, give a, a couple of shout outs before sure. we jump off the air Absolutely. one if you look around the gym every student section cleaned up their own area yes they did and that's something you know you you see it every once in a while where you know you go somewhere and, and a student section cleans up their area but all four of them did it today so you know shout out to all the schools for that and then my other shout out is to you i mean you stepped in and <laughs> you've you've done three games in uh less than 24 hours so it's, it's you know i i enjoy this a lot you know and i i you know it's great to to get the kids on too and i I'm glad that, um, that that Caden has, you know, relished that a little bit. And you're going to hear a lot from him as far as Senator basketball goes coming up because there's some games on the road that I can't go to either that he'll travel with the right. team. More importantly, probably that tournament coming up, you know, yeah. he'll probably yep. do that because, uh, you know, I'm forced to work my real job. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he enjoys it. And, you know, he, he told me uh, – yesterday you know before the uh, tournament he said dad i'd really like to go in the cheer block because he enjoys doing that too and i said son that's you know that's part of your high school days you need yep. to go do that and i said myself and the professor we can yeah. handle it we've we'll, been we'll around the block a few times <laughs> so i think we can handle it but uh, you know it was great to have the salem kids on oh, too yeah. last night yeah. you know and you know i had a lot of people comment to me last night uh, about that they said you know that's that shows great you know sportsmanship from you and our west washington live stream uh you know to let one of the other schools that also has a good live stream program yeah. Oh, yeah you know jd wade swift does a great job with theirs much like you do here probably two of the best in the state in my opinion because i've watched both of them <laughs> uh at different times and you know it, that's a great thing there's a lot of people that can't get out you know can't come to the games and you know, it's a great thing to be able to put that out there for those folks to listen to and also watch with the live stream. So, right. you know, it, it's a great program. We're still, and I want to put this plug in, we're still looking for sponsors. I know I've talked to several uh, throughout the year this year trying to get some more sponsors on because, like you said, all that money goes back to the kids, right. goes back into uh, the athletic department and also the live stream program. And, you know, our, our live stream here, you know, runs a lot of things. We go, like you said, you've been gone all day doing this. And, that, you know, my shout out would be to you. Uh, you know, you guys, you put a ton of time in this. It's a lot of work, a lot of effort. You were gone. You know, you do the wrestling, girls basketball, volleyball. It doesn't matter. It seems like we have great coverage. And, you know, our, our family out here at West Washington is just that. It's a family. Everybody works together. We get things done. And, uh you know, uh, my hat's off to, uh, to to everyone here and, and all the things that they do to support these kids, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's that's why we do it, to yeah. support the kids. Absolutely. The the Eastern Musketeers come out victorious tonight, um, winning their third championship in a row. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to their, uh, you know, coaching staff and everything that they've been able to get done. Congratulations to Doc Nash. Oh, yeah. You know, on, on yeah. you know, what Runner he's up. been able to do. They Runner had a great up. game against Salem just tonight. I think they just kind of ran out of steam. Yeah. And you knew Eastern was going to do everything they could to not let Kasem Nash have a 43-point performance. Yep. And, and they did that. You know, he finished the game with 12, but th they were a hard-fought 12. He had right. to work to get any shots up. And, and um, you know, it, it was just a great tournament once again. And like I said, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think Salem's going to get better. I like our chances at West Washington as far as, you know, heading into the rest of the season. Eastern, like we said, definitely going to make some noise in that 2A. And, uh, you know, uh, I think Borden will do the same. Borden, a sectional opponent <laughs> a for sectional us. A sectional opponent for us. So, you know, that's a team that we're going to see down the road right. uh, as well. So, you know, great tournament, great job for you. Uh, 
thank all our sponsors. That's that's what keeps us going. Uh, we want to thank them, Links Clothing and Shoes, for all that they do. Uh, Raymond James uh, Financial, uh, also uh, United Producers, uh, Ryan Bat, Michael his Long, mom, Michael Long, American Family Insurance, don't, Washington County Community. Don't forget Foundation. this one. This one's important. Eddie Gilstrap <laughs> Motors. I was saving that for the last, but yeah. We appreciate all their support and all the things that they do for us here uh, on on the broadcast and the live stream and also WWSR. So that's all the time we've got for tonight. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Bubba, last, last anything? Last thing I got to say is uh, everyone have a, a, a very Merry Christmas oh, yeah. and a Happy New Year. We will be back on WWSR. Uh, for that broadcast at the uh, the, the tournament that the, the boys team the is playing Northeast, in. Uh, yeah, where's, is, is it, it Northeast Dubois? Dubois? I think I it is. I forget where it is. But I'm, anyway, we will have that for you so you can tune in to WWSR and listen to that. Just download the app. That's yep. all you got to do. Yep. And there's and, been, there, it, those of you who are tuned in now, there's been a little issue with it um, running music, but we're able to get into it when games are on. Right. So it, even if it's not working during the day, we're able to get into it, you know, at night for, for the games. So. Yeah, absolutely. So that's all the time we've got. So for the professor, Craig Akers, this is Bub Abbott. We say God bless you and we'll send it back over to the studio here.